Hello Godot users, this is Wizard of Westmarch with another Godot tutorial. This time we'll be talking about the call method track on the animation player. If you didn't watch the last video, I would recommend going back and checking it out first because I'm not going to recover much ground here and things may not be super obvious if you haven't used the animation player before. What we're adding on to it is the ability to call methods at some point during the animation. So let's say you're going along and you've got like a two second animation and at the one second mark, you want to update your speed as an example so that you'll start moving faster. You know, maybe, maybe you're doing some kind of dash animation that like the, say the, enemy re reels back and then they launch forward and that so what you would do is you would call the update to speed you would call the method to dash and so there's a property and a and a method and then at the end you could re update your speed back to you know normal instead of let's say triple and maybe disable the dash and instead of having to create a timer and trying to sync it up with the animation of like the rear back, just put it in the animation itself. And it'll, it just, it makes things much easier and less error prone. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the animation player offers us. Alrighty. So we, we talked about the idea here. So I've got an animation that you've been seeing on the screen the whole time. Let's go ahead and play it real quick just to get a reference point. So it, it starts out and it's it waits a little bit and then it starts modulating the color. The color modulation is purely there as a reference point so that we can see when things trigger relative to each other. So let's go ahead and get to the, the heart. So you, you click on it and you do call add call method track. You pick which node you want to call a method on. You'll note they're all available, even though only the um, playable sprite has one. And that's because, so let's come here to zero. Actually, no, let's, let's do it at 0.3. Insert key. And so test func. So what you will notice when we click on this is, so it's telling you which function is, tells you how many args it had because it auto detects it. And so arg zero, it takes a float. And so I'm going to set that to a hundred. Now, first important note, when you play the animation, it's not going to react because just like using setters, code is not run in the UI if you do a if you play an animation. But if you actually run the code, you will notice after a few tenths of a second, it snaps down because what the code is doing is it's just doing global position.y plus test input plus my var. And you will see my var is up here as an export. The idea being that you can impact the function in multiple ways. So if I come here and let's go ahead and click on this. So I can key this in and now my var is available. Let's go ahead and yeah. So I'm going to put this here and now at this point, we will go ahead and insert key, put the test function in again. And this time we're going to have it at zero and we'll see it still moves because my var is set. So now we run, boop, and then it moves slightly again. So you can tell both are, and in fact, you know what, let, just to make it hyper clear, let's go ahead and insert key. Let's set my var at zero to make it just, there. there is no doubt it is not set in the first one. And then it is set later. 
so that it, it bumps down by the hundred that we set it to in the parameter. And then instead it bumps it by only the 25 of the property. So you can do it either way. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is, so you don't have to only do one method on a track. It's This is any function on the thing, in this case, like playable sprite. So we come here to the end, insert key, I can drop in a queue free. And now when we run, it'll go, it'll go, color change and disappears because we have deleted the object. If you're doing a death animation and like, let's say you've got a, a standard shader that like fades it away and just until it like disintegrates. You don't want the object sitting around there forever and you wanna make sure it happens after the disintegration completes. So what you can do is set the, set a property track that is impacting the uniform. And once you get to the end, then delete the object because you know it's not visible anymore. This will let you keep everything nice and straightforward and get it all working. So today we've covered the basics of how the call method track works and how it can interact with the property track to let you control when code is run relative to an animation with the most common use I've had is definitely the queue free, but it, you, anything you can think of that requires a method call can just be done with this using built-in methods, using methods you've created, however you want to handle it. And if you want the, the methods to be manipulated by a property that's controlled by the animation player, you certainly can, you can just pass in, gives you a lot of different tools to work with. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to post a comment asking. If you also have any ideas for future similar tutorials, please let me know. And if I use it, I will credit you in the video. I hope you have a great day and take care.